Hello and welcome to Back to the Science. I'm Dr. Susan Oliver and I'm a scientist and back there is Cindy Oliver and she's a dog. Over the last month or so, there has been an increase in people falsely claiming that vaccines are resulting in excess deaths. Some people are saying it directly and some people are saying it indirectly. And I'll just show you an example of one of the people who is saying it directly, because it gives you an idea of the type of intellect involved. This is a tweet from someone known as KevinBLiar.com, and that certainly is a very apt name for him. According to Kevin, the 1918 Spanish flu did not kill 50 million people. Vaccines that the government forced them to take did and they are repeating the same pattern now. 50 million people dead from 1918 flu vaccine. Now, as I'm sure most of you know, there was no flu vaccine in 1918. The influenza virus wasn't even isolated until 1933. And the first flu vaccine wasn't invented until 1938. So, Kevin B is living up to his liar.com name and lying. So that's the direct approach, but some people are also using a more indirect approach in an attempt to get around YouTube guidelines. An example of this is Dr. John Campbell. He has recorded a number of videos where he presents various anecdotes and data on excess deaths and then reminds his followers that he is not allowed to present any information on vaccines contrary to the information provided by local health authorities and the World Health Organization. Based on the comments on his videos, his followers are getting the message loud and clear that John thinks that vaccines are at least partially responsible for the excess deaths that are being seen. But by not saying it outright, he gets around the YouTube guidelines and keeps his revenue stream. In fact, it's amazingly easy to determine if vaccines are leading to an increase in excess deaths. All we need to do is compare the death rate amongst vaccinated people with the death rate amongst unvaccinated people. And it just so happens the information to do that is available for England on this ONS webpage. The information is available in an Excel spreadsheet, but I've pulled out the main numbers and put them into a PowerPoint slide to make them easier to see. This table shows the age standardised mortality rates for deaths by vaccination status in England. And the data includes all deaths occurring between the 1st of January 2021 and the 31st of May 2022. And that's the most up-to-date information at the moment. And when they say vaccinated, that is any number of vaccines at any time. So it includes people who have only just had their first dose, as well as people who have had three doses. So when we look at deaths from all causes, we see the age standardised mortality rate for vaccinated people is 957.4 per 100,000 person years, compared with 2,307.5 for the unvaccinated. So obviously the unvaccinated are much more likely to die than the vaccinated. However, this does include COVID deaths. So maybe it isn't a fair comparison because we know that the COVID vaccines are going to reduce COVID deaths. So let's have a look at non-COVID deaths. Here we see that the age standardised mortality rate is 892.9 per 100,000 person years for the vaccinated compared to 1,474.3 for the unvaccinated. So even when we are just looking at non-COVID deaths, the unvaccinated are still more likely to die. 
which is, of course, the exact opposite of what you would see if the vaccines were, in fact, leading to excess deaths. And I will be discussing later in the video why we see more deaths amongst the unvaccinated, even for deaths that don't involve COVID. And for completeness, these are the mortality rates for deaths involving COVID. Unsurprisingly, they are considerably higher in the unvaccinated at 863.2 per 100,000 person years than the vaccinated at 64.5. So despite the claims of grifters, the evidence makes it very clear that the vaccines are not responsible for the excess deaths. So let's have a closer look at the excess deaths. And I will be concentrating on the data out of the UK in this video, as that is where most of the claims that I've seen seem to be coming from. This chart here from the Office for National Statistics is shared a lot as evidence for the excess deaths. The blue bars are deaths involving COVID and the turquoise bars are deaths not involving COVID. But there are two things that a lot of people aren't realising when looking at this figure. Firstly, although it says that the data is being compared with the previous five years, which is the dotted black line, it isn't really being compared with the data for the last five years. The ONS have removed 2020 from the data set for 2021 onwards because this was a year where there were a lot of excess deaths. There are some people like John Campbell claiming that the real number of excess deaths is even worse because the deaths are being compared with years that include already inflated deaths from the pandemic but this simply isn't true. The other important thing to note is that this is raw data. It doesn't take into account the fact that the population is growing and is also aging. So we would expect some increase in deaths simply because of this. Now, to be fair to the people sharing this chart, I don't think the ONS makes these points particularly clear. To get a better idea of what are actually excess deaths and what are expected increases owing to population change, we need to do some fancy statistics to calculate what the death rate would have been if we hadn't had the pandemic. Luckily for us, this has been done by the Office for Health Improvement and Disparities. And this is what they found. The chart at the top shows times when there were excess deaths in light turquoise and times where there were fewer deaths than expected in dark turquoise. So as you can see, there are some periods where we see more deaths than expected and some where we see less deaths. The chart at the bottom is similar to the chart from the ONS, except that instead of showing the five-year average as a dotted line, it shows the expected deaths had the pandemic not occurred. COVID deaths are shown in yellow and deaths where COVID isn't mentioned on the death certificate are shown in grey. As you can see, deaths are above what would be expected for the time of year from the middle of April onwards. The number of deaths that are more than expected is lower than what is seen in the ONS chart but we are still seeing excess deaths and this is a concern. We already know that these deaths aren't being caused by the vaccine. So what is causing them? Well, the short answer is we don't know for sure because our proper analysis hasn't been done yet. But there is some data that gives us a few hints. You will recall that earlier in the video, we showed that people who are unvaccinated are more likely to have died since January 2021. And this trend wasn't just for COVID deaths, it was also for non-COVID deaths. Sadly, this is not surprising because we know that once you have had COVID, your chances of developing cardiovascular complications increases. In this study, which is published in Nature Medicine, 
They look at cardiovascular complications over a period of 12 months following COVID for 153,760 individuals, quite a few. And they compare the risk with two sets of control cohorts, a historical cohort from before the pandemic and a contemporary cohort of people with no evidence of SARS-CoV-2. They looked at a number of different cardiovascular complications and in every case, the risk was increased following COVID. And you can see a summary of the results here. The chart on the left is the hazard ratio and anything to the right of the dotted line means an increased risk. The chart on the right shows the excess burden per 1,000 people. If you're not familiar with the terms, cerebrovascular disorders include things like stroke, dysrhythmia, includes a number of conditions where the heart doesn't beat properly, including atrial fibrillation. Inflammatory heart diseases include myocarditis and pericarditis. Ischemic heart disease includes things like heart attack and angina. Thrombotic disorders are conditions involving blood clots. And MACE stands for Major Adverse Cardiovascular Event and includes all-cause mortality, stroke and myocardial infarction. So even after people have recovered from COVID, they have an elevated chance of dying. And it's not just adults who have an increased risk after COVID. Sadly, there are also increased risks for children and adolescents. This study was published in the Morbidity and Mortality Weekly Report from the Centres for Disease Control and Prevention. They found that compared with patients aged 0 to 17 years without previous COVID-19, those with previous COVID-19 had higher rates of acute pulmonary embolism, myocarditis and cardiomyopathy. Venous thromboembolic events, acute and unspecified renal failure, and type 1 diabetes. So no matter what age you are, you are at an increased risk for a number of conditions after getting COVID. And some of these conditions could also increase your chance of death. However, this is probably not the whole story. There is another elephant in the room. And this is the effect the pandemic has had on what was already a stretched NHS. An analysis of the situation with the NHS has been done by the British Medical Association. And I will just show you some of their charts. This chart here shows a number of patients waiting either over 18 weeks or 52 weeks for consultant-led elective care. And those waiting over 18 weeks is shown in the light green and those waiting over 52 weeks is shown in the dark green. The dotted grey vertical line shows the start of the pandemic and it's pretty clear that the waiting times have exploded since then. And of course, the longer the wait for elective surgery, the greater the chances that whatever condition you have will lead to further complications which for some people could result in death. The next chart looks at the percentage of patients seen within the target timescales following GP referral for cancer care. And again, we see that the proportion of patients meeting the targets are much lower than before the pandemic. And of course, whether or not you survive cancer is very dependent on how quickly treatment begins. The final chart looks at NHS emergency department attendances and waits in England. The chart on the right shows a number of people who have had to wait more than 12 hours from when a decision was made to admit them to when they were actually admitted. And as you can see, the numbers have exploded in 2022. This is particularly concerning because it has been shown that increased waiting times lead to increased mortality. This study looked at the association between delays to patient admission from the emergency department and all-cause 
30-day mortality. They found that delays in hospital admission for patients in excess of five hours from the time of arrival at the ED were associated with an increase in all-cause mortality and that the increase in mortality increased further as waiting times increased. So in summary, despite the claims of some grifters that we are seeing an increase in mortality owing to the vaccines, the data says the opposite. More unvaccinated than vaccinated people are dying, even from causes other than COVID. Possible reasons for the excess deaths in England include post-COVID complications and the overwhelmed NHS. But more analysis needs to be done. So if you see anyone trying to claim or imply that excess deaths are related to the vaccines, please share this video with them. If you'd like to look further into the data I've presented, I've provided links in the video's description. And please remember, this video is about the science, but you shouldn't take it as medical advice. For that, you should speak to your medical practitioner. If you've got this far, thank you for listening. And if you've liked or commented on the video, Double thank you because that helps the algorithm and means that more people will see the video. And of course, thank you to everyone who has bought me a coffee. I really appreciate your support. I'll be continuing to make videos about the science. So if you'd like to see them, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you.